Hello and welcome to the greatest rewatch in television history. Yes, we're still talking about Lost, and if you if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell a friend, all that different stuff. But we got Jeremiah and Matt here today to talk about two fantastic episodes. How's it going, guys? It's going great. It's going fantastic. Glad to be here. Now, Jeremiah, we've already listened to Matt's story about how he got into Lost and it put a lot of people to sleep. So how did you, how, how did you get into Lost? Said that, Matt. I would have said that. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremiah. People, people are still riveted. Uh, about, uh, <laughs> well, I don't think my story is going to be more exciting. Um, I kind of I fell in that category like a lot of people did that, um, you know, they, there was a lot of hype leading into this this trail of uh, this pilot because it was supposed to be like one of the most expensive pilots of all time. And uh, just like a lot of people, I immediately was intrigued. And I remember telling my wife, I was like, we're watching this show. So we, we, were, we were there ready to go for episode one. And immediately was just enthralled. I don't. I don't think you'll meet anyone that didn't watch that pilot and not at least have been interested in seeing the rest of it. You know what I mean? I was immediately hooked automatically, and I don't think I missed an episode after that. I mean, I don't. I didn't have a DVR, so I did wind up taping a lot of episodes if I knew I was going to be gone. Uh, so that's a little old school there, right? But that, of course, was the time frame. But uh, yeah, it was a show that I could not stop watching. And just like almost every guest you've had on here that you've ever uh, talked about is it changed the way I looked at television. I never looked at, I've never looked at television the same way ever again. Um, obviously, uh, with the introduction to the Internet, uh, it was it was a perfect time for a show to come on like that because now we're able to realize the power of the Internet where we can talk to each other. We had podcasts. We had forums. We had all these ways to communicate with each other about this crazy show that had us all enthralled and it changed everything on how i look at television now of course now i make podcasts about television i overanalyze everything about television <laughs> um i expect even more from my writing uh from television all because of this show and it's it's it definitely changed my life for sure and uh yeah but i was hooked ever from the beginning on uh i was i was a fan right away yeah, I gotta say that was a much better story than Matt's story. No, 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 no. Wait, I, I'm, I'm actually in in Jeremiah's camp here in the fact that I I was I was watching the first the first uh, the pilot. Yeah, you know, it had a lot of hype. I was actually with some family at the time, so it's kind of like a family kind of gathering. You know, sure, we're all sitting sure. around watching it. Uh, you know, like cousins, aunts, uncles. You know, but it was the fact that. I didn't have a VCR set to record the second episode and I don't know where I was at at that time. And for whatever reason, I missed out on like the subsequent episodes, but I was like intrigued. I wanted to know more. It was, it was definitely right. on my like, Okay. I got to go back and, and watch these things. Um, sure. And to Jeremiah's point. Um, the other thing is, is that it was in the sweet spot of the internet where we didn't have streaming just yet. Um, but we did have access to like, I mean, I remember looking on Wikipedia for information. I remember, you know, religiously watching for the next trailer to drop. Go, you know, when when the episode is finally available on ABC.com, you'd, you'd rewatch it for clues and, and right. pause it. I mean, there was so right. much, so much that the inter internet gave us as far as like that, you know, I don't know, that quest for the next episode, you know, so. Yeah, did you, well, you, did you guys think that even today, uh, we've had so much great television come out since Lost, but do you feel like even today, I still think this is the most talked about and analyzed show still even up to, to this point? I mean, oh, well, there's been yeah. some other really uh, fascinating shows to make us think really hard and overanalyze and stuff, but I still think Lost is number one. I, I don't think there's still been anything quite like it. Do you guys agree with that? Oh, 100%, yeah. Yeah, okay. Definitely. I, it, there's something about it that just hit the zeitgeist and captured a lot of just different different people. You know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah. this is a show that's about uh, cooking meth. You know, or this is a show. <laughs> this is a show about you know advertising in the '60s. You know, great shows. You know, and and a great television network. But this this garnered attention from a lot of different directions. So. But Jeremiah, you yeah. said something in your in your opening there. You said it changed the way you had to watch. You you wanted like better. You 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 wanted better television. You just didn't accept. Yes. You know a, a show that kind of halved it. If that makes right. sense. But you you expected more from TV. And Absolutely. I think that's a great point. 
It, yeah, absolutely. And, and what's really sad is that the networks themselves still haven't learned this lesson yet because they're still the ones that are failing us all the time. I mean, there's a handful of decent shows on the big, net, big networks, but still not great. And thank goodness for all these cable uh, cable outlets and, uh, and now streaming outlets that are providing us what we want, which is really intriguing television and it's not just about tight great writing i mean that definitely helps some of the shows you mentioned matt uh obviously breaking bad and mad men you could arg arguably say that even the writing on that was even a higher level that we got in lost overall especially with dialogue and things like that but it still didn't have that intrigue to drag you into where you just were obsessed with everything about it and it wasn't just about the mysteries of the island which i know that most people did get caught up, especially your casual fans but for me it introduced a whole new way of of how we should look at um character development uh mainly because of the the wonderful use of the flashbacks um helped us really dig deep into a character and make really want you to want more from these people and find out more about them and what made them who they were which is obviously what uh carlton and, and them really wanted for us to p uh, focus on anyway and they did they just nailed it they had it out of the park it well, you, mentioned the, you, you mentioned the flashbacks to me I've, ha I've had people you know maybe the casual fans saying oh they didn't like the flashbacks i said that was the most important part of the show yeah. I mean, Absolutely. it literally was the most important because it really showed who they were on and off the island. I mean, it it, it just and who we should root for and who we shouldn't root for. To be honest with you, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with everything you said. Those are just those are the the casual fans. Those are the ones who only watched the show because they wanted to know more and everything that they could about <laughs> the island. That, right. you know what I mean? And I I get that they they gave us so much of this that it was hard not to want to know as much as you can about the island, but they were forgetting about the importance of what what the showrunners wanted us to do. And that's what wanted us to fall in love with these people and understand them and root for them or root against them and 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 really just want to know what their final story was going to be. So for us deep lost fans, the true fans I call them, uh, we cared about what was going on with them more than anything. The island just reserved, preserved something that much more fascinating about what's going on to them at that point and how that was going to change their lives, which it obviously did. Right. Some for the best. Well, some well like really. you said too, like the, the, the characters, they, they it had something for everybody. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it, you can see a little bit of, you know, and I can see myself, I mean, it had, I think they did such a great job of getting, you know, everybody included. Not yeah. Just you, guys, you, can think, you guys, all your guests and everybody, you guys have already discussed so great, in how important the diversity of all these characters were. And I, I definitely think an that's another, you know, kudos to everyone involved in making this show because they've they've ch changed how we looked at you just don't have all these cookie cutter boring characters. Every single right. one of them was so fascinating and different. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh it was it was great. So yeah. And, so I much. think it I think it goes to the the casting and how organic they kept it too. You know, everybody I think one of the the uh the knee-jerk reactions from the the not the not so heartfelt fans was the fact that they <laughs> they wanted this whole thing spelled out from the beginning that the the answers were there the whole time and then they right. it was all of these puzzle pieces that they were filling in and they had the picture painted from the beginning. Well, <laughs> writing and, and anything creative doesn't work like that, you know. Yeah. When when you start with a painting, you don't know what it's going to look like at the end. And sure. when they went into the casting room, the fact that they they saw Jorge and they were like, yes, he's in the show. Like mm -hmm. you're not obviously going to be Sawyer. You're not going to be Jack, but we got a part for you. And same with son. I think son was another, uh, another, uh, actress that had, had was in the, the, uh, casting. And I could be she wrong auditioned about for that. Kate, right? I thought you auditioned for Kate. Yeah. But, but I she, thought, but, so. but they, but they wrote a, a different part for her though. Um, like they, so I, I just, I think it just goes to like the fact that they were so open to like who they got in that casting call. Right. So absolutely. Um, yep. Well, definitely an amazing show. And like I said, these two episodes, I was like, I, I forgot how good they were. Yeah. I mean, I, it's like, oh my God. I was like, uh, well, we'll start off. I hope I'm saying this right. De Ax Makina. Is that right? Is that close? I, I know I I know I would botch it every time. It's definitely a difficult word to say for sure. Um, so I'll we'll go with that. That sounds good to me. 
What do you say, Matt? Deuce machine. Deuce machine. Okay. <laughs> Deus machina. Yeah, I think I, that sounds much better than what I said. Something much better. Like that, right? Yeah. I always let Jay say it, so it was always like, okay, I don't have to say it. So the, the yeah, okay. title. I'll, I'll get like the next one. I can do. I got the next one. Okay. I'll do that. Right. I can do that one. But um, <laughs> I took a lot of I took a lot of notes on this this episode. I just kept writing things down. I couldn't believe how. It's been like four years since I've seen, you know, all of them. And so you remember, I remember the scenes, but you forget what went with what. And I was yeah. just like, you know, you start off with, with you know, Locke is playing mousetrap or showing this kid how to play mousetrap and he sees a woman. And look, let me get your guys' thoughts on, on just go ahead and start uh, what you guys thought about it. About sure. this episode? Yeah, overall? about the episode. Yeah, overall. Just... All right, I'll, I'll let Jay go. Or uh, I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Well, uh, any <laughs> the, other, episode, the other, <laughs> the other chat, any episode that um, centrics around John Locke, I'm immediately was going to be in for no matter what. So that makes this episode extremely special because um, it's very significant to him. You know, you, you look at this episode and you think to your the first thing I thought of after watching it was, wow, what if Jack's dad had not had the kidney problems? He would have never went to go look for John. And it, John's life would have been completely different. He probably wouldn't have ended up on the island, if you think about it. And so, uh, yeah, so immediately knowing that it was involving him. And, and of course, we had this great buildup to uh, wind up being the fact that the island, I mean, clearly, the, and I know we'll probably dig into it, but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, too, the, the, uh, what exactly was going on with the fact that uh, John on the island was losing his his the ability to walk again. And yet then we're also getting into on the flashback and you will see this important story breakdown about how he discovered his parents and then gets completely betrayed by his father, which was just heartbreaking as heartbreaking as walkabout is when, when it's finally revealed in walkabout, which is, is of course almost everyone's favorite episode or one of them. Um, you're so devastated when you realize what John had been going through and oh, the right. fact he couldn't walk and he heard this, this, this big event that he wanted to do and he wasn't able to do. And, um, oh, I just remember being so crushed when I saw that the first time, but this episode as well, when he breaks down there at that very last scene, crying in his car, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that was just as almost as, almost just as a devastating to find out that, um, you know, he's got these parents and they're terrible people. Obviously, his father probably being the worst of the two, but his mother is really not that much better. But no, uh, yeah, so I, I think that this is a pitiful episode for his character, obviously, and uh, it is extremely enjoyable. And I have not seen it. Uh, maybe, man, Jack, I think I haven't seen him in long in four years. I was trying to remember the last time I actually did a full rewatch. It's been a long time, so it was really fresh again for me, and I enjoyed every minute of uh, of watching it for sure. What about you, Matt? What did you think about this episode? Uh, yeah, yeah, I I liked it a lot. Um, the uh, uh, w what reminded me watching this was, you know, when you're watching Lost the first time through, and you learn that that Jack, you know, is it, or, I'm sorry, uh, Locke is in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. There is that mystery of like, well, how did he end up in the wheelchair? And you right. see this episode, and you're like, oh, we're gonna find out in this episode. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's season one. You're like, oh, this is we're gonna find, and then you're like. Nope. <laughs> but you know, you, you say that, but halfway through, you you, you don't care because right, so, exactly. So, so much is totally. going, so much is going on. Like I, I remember, I was like, "You okay? Good. We're gonna find out how he ended up in the wheelchair." Yeah, right. But then halfway through, you're like, "I don't care because there's so much going right. on." Yeah, yeah, and and um, you you find out after the episode, you realize, okay, this must have taken place in John's life or even earlier, uh, obviously before what happens to him when it, it does cause him to be to be paralyzed but um you don't kind of know that going into it and you're right i think i think i felt the same way i think watching that episode like you guys that first time out and granted it's been a long time since we watched it the first time <laughs> but i think you're right i think i went into the episode thinking we were going to find out how john uh got in that wheelchair and obviously we didn't but like like you said jack i you didn't care at the end because it was just a powerful episode so oh. what what was going on with Locke's legs? Why was he losing? I mean, he gets the the, the was a treble say. They try to break the. Uh, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. And you know, Boone's like, ah, oh, I'm so tired of this, and it doesn't work. And then Locke has a piece of shrapnel or metal sticking out of his mm -hmm. leg, and he, he doesn't know. 
so what do we did we ever get any answers on that? Is just that just the island saying, okay, hey. Well, I, I have so I have some theories. I'm trying to remember. No, I cannot remember exactly what my theories were when I first watched it. Uh, but over the years, of course, my feelings always have been on this episode that what they were trying to tell us is even though he didn't, he was, his words weren't expressing it, but I felt like maybe John's faith was, was he was losing his faith. Yeah. You know, they, they have the, the thing, what is it? <laughs> I know Boone. Tr Boone. Trouble, oh, trouble show, I believe they call it. Yes, and it, it fails. And you could tell at that point that he's, He's devastated and he's questioning. I think he's he in his mind, even though he's telling Boone other things. I think in his mind he's questioning it. So now he's he's losing his faith, and I'm wondering if the island was taking away from him his ability slowly to, um, you know, go back to where he was with where he was able to walk because he was losing his faith that in the island. That's what I have always had. Do we do we feel like have we changed our mind at all? I don't know if anybody's ever had any other great, better theories than I mean, why. I, think also goes with, I, I mean, I think it goes hand in hand with the, you know, what we see happening to him off the island, you know, in the past. Like, I mean, he's not losing his faith, but he's being completely taken advantage of, you know, and he's losing his body, literally, <laughs> you know. Um, I, but I think that's, I, I mean, that's de that's definitely what I thought. Uh, so the easy. island is the island, I guess, is using him just like his father was in the flashback, right? I mean, it, it's it's using it's using him in a way, and um, I wonder if maybe is that part of it? Maybe I, I don't know. I mean, I know Jack's always had theories about um, the man in black, you know, trying to work through Jack or <laughs> lock. John. I keep saying Jack. John, yeah. Well, I think um, when, you, when you said it, you said it, Matt, when he said, you know, Locke is is getting, you know, he, he getting used off the island, he's getting used on the island. That's pretty much Locke's history. Right. People, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this poor guy who just wants to be loved is used all the time. I mean, people just take advantage of him, and he just wants so badly to be accepted. Yeah. Ab oh, absolutely. Take, I mean, your I mean, your dad. You you meet him after what forty years, whatever it is, and. I never understood why he just didn't say, "Okay, thanks for the kidney, son." And, but he he just wanted the kidney. It was part of a game for uh, Anthony yeah. Cooper. Absolutely, it was yeah, a mousetrap. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Ab that's right. It was a mousetrap. Another reference to another game. And I I know you were starting with your notes there, um, with uh, you know at the beginning there where he he meets his mom, but in that scene. She, she is she asking about footballs or something like that? Yeah, she asked about like, football. Yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, and and aisle eight is, is regulation, and then aisle fifteen is nerf. Yeah, or something like that. Eight fifteen. So a yeah, the the numbers are there. Um, the fight, sure. uh, of course, but also like, what kind of store puts nerf like ball footballs in like way far apart? I'm like seventeen aisles of, or seven aisles apart. You got nerf, mm, like it's get you to buy more stuff. I know, totally. It's all, like, it's all a game, man. Yeah, sports over here, but why are Nerf balls? Anyway, let's go figure. It's an unusual it. store. It's very <laughs> unusual store. <laughs> Before we get him on the island, <laughs> we, we did have a, a side story going on that I thought was pretty interesting. It's uh, Sawyer's headaches. Yes. Yeah, that is the other big part of the story. Um, I don't know really what to take away from that. Um, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts more about it because I, I was thinking about that too when I was when I was doing this rewatch, and I don't know. I don't know if I really came away with anything really significant about this. Um, and, and also too, since it's been so long since I've rewatched this, like trying to remember, like maybe there's other episodes down the road that maybe kind of reference some of this. Uh, what do you What do you guys got for me? Because I, I would love to hear what you guys' thoughts on this whole significance about that. I think you had two stubborn guys. And of course, it, I think it set up that whole Kate and Jack Sawyer triangle. Love mm -hmm. triangle. But I think it was more like, you know, Sawyer never liked to ask for help. And Jack really didn't want to help Sawyer too much. He didn't like him. In fact, he, gives, he goes, yeah, I can't wait to go help him get a new nickname. Something, something <laughs> to that effect. I mean, uh, I mean, so it, was just, it wasn't it wasn't crucial to the episode, but I thought it was uh, it, I thought it was fun TV. So it's not necessarily maybe a, a, a big significance to who Sawyer is or necessarily who Jack is, other than the fact that it continues 
that feud between the two of them. And uh, they're obviously extremely very different, different people. And right. that's what made it so fun to watch was these two, how they kind of just like the way John and, and John Locke and, and Jack had their battles between each other. But you also had the Sawyer and Jack thing, which right. those are all great triangles that we always enjoyed watching over and over again uh, because it was so fascinating. So you think it was more of just to kind of lead more to add on to that? I think it's more. Yeah, I think it's to add on to that this is going to be the love triangle that. You know, I, I think they were trying to, like we said earlier, they were trying to make everybody happy. Right. Mm -hmm. And get the shippers out there and, you know, oh my God, who's she going to end up with? I mean, I didn't care, but I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, How dare you. I did care about that stuff, but, but going back to well, the whole, go, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say subtly. I mean, it, it brings about the fact that here you have John Locke dealing with some physical adversity on the island while. You know, it's like, is the island causing this to happen, you know, or something yeah. like that? So That's a good point. Um, I like that because it's very possible. Why couldn't the island do that? And the island was able to heal John of being uh, in the, uh, the wheelchair. Why couldn't he have, why couldn't the island have given him this issue with, with his eyesight? But, but why, though? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder. I don't know. It's very, very interesting it, to think about now. The island picked and choose who was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Probably at the time watching it, I probably thought that whole storyline at the moment was more of a snooze fest to me. I was probably more fascinated about what was going on in the flashback and more what's going on uh, with the hatch. But um, but now looking back on it, now you're like wondering even more like, oh, am I missing something here? What's going on? What's, is there more to this than that? But I do think that it definitely led to more of that great friction between, you know, Jack Sawyer and, of course, Kate. So. All right. You mentioned earlier, Jeremiah, that that, that Lockman may might have been losing faith. There was a scene where he gets he he's, he goes uh, tells Boone the island will tell us what to do, and Boone's like, "What? What? Yeah, because he's so frustrated. He's and he goes, "Well, I, ignore what I'm saying." I, I, so, I think you're pretty much you could be spot on about that. I think he was losing, you know, his faith in what was going on because he couldn't get yeah. into this this hatch. It was driving him crazy. Yeah, because as you guys have pointed out before. John from the very beginning is the only person that looks at this island different than any, you know, he's the only one that looks at this island as something special that they're supposed to be there, that every, all this is, is very important. And I think now, you know, they, they, he's put so much of his focus and energy on, on getting into the hatch. And I think at that point, yeah, he's starting to really lose a little bit of faith. And I think that's why the island starts to take away from that special power that has healed him. Um, and that's the only thing I could come up with, you know, you know, looking at this uh, again at a, a different angle, at an angle many years down the road. I just think that's kind of what they're trying to say. Um, question for you guys about John, since this episode obviously centers so much around him. I tell people that to me, John Locke is the most tragic character out of all the characters in Lost. Do you guys feel that way? Am I off? Oh, yeah. Track? No. But mm. I feel like he's the most heartbreaking. When you look from his story from the very beginning, everything he has to go through being in and out of, uh, was it foster homes or was he in um, foster homes and never having parents, you know, finally meets his parents and he's the, the worst people in the world. And, you know, the poor guy gets obsessed with his father and, and his father does nothing but destroy him, you know, and then he gets on the Island. And I, and I understand he had some significant important roles to the, to, to what happens on the Island. But, but then in his final ending, it's, it just, everything just seems so horrible for this this character he even gets used by the man in black in the end it just it just seems so awful i just feel like he in my opinion is is definitely the most tragic of them all and my and my the one i think which is really ironic that these episodes are back to back because the person i feel like the writers try too hard to make me feel like he's tragic but eh, not buying it and that would be jack and we could talk we could talk about that when we get to the next episode but i do feel like john is is the most tragic so where do you guys fall on who's is he the worst, or do you think there's somebody, somebody that was worse off? I don't. I can't see anyone being worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his, from his backstories to what happened on the island, it just, it just, it yeah, just, just the way things terrible. ended for him. I don't know. It's pretty, and we haven't got to the worst part yet. So <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I mean, in uh, no, right. The previous uh, um, <coughs> some of the, some of the other episodes that, that Jack uh, and I we talked about was uh, ones that dealt with um, Charlie. And how tragic Charlie is, you know, um, very tragic, and it sure. and it pulls at your heartstrings, you know, like 
you know, his, his addiction and going back and forth and like his, his fight to be, to be a better person, you know, but you know, Locke is different in the fact that deep down inside you feel that he is a truly good person. Oh, yes, sir. You know, like, I mean, and it's not to say that Charlie's not a good person, but it's a different struggle between the two of them, you know, Mm -hmm. whereas like, well, Charlie's a user (laughs) and, and Locke is being used. Right. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I feel like John never really had anything go well for him. You know, like, I feel like, like you, you mentioned Charlie, because I think Charlie definitely is a tragic character and someone we all love deeply. Obviously, I mean, everybody was devastated when 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 he dies, and the way he died, of course. But um, if you think about it, you know, Charlie had he had choices in his life, you know, mm-hmm. um, and he just made the wrong choices. Not to say that John obviously made some bad choices too, but I felt like there really wasn't a lot of opportunities for the guy. I mean, outside of Maybe not being so obsessed about his dad and all that stuff. I don't know. But, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like Charlie had some opportunities where he could have really had a great life. I feel like maybe. But I don't know about John. I don't know if things were ever going to go well for this guy. <laughs> well, like we, we said in the beginning, he, he wanted to be loved. And he, he finally meets his mom. And his mom goes, well, you're special. You don't right. have a dad. You were you were you were Jesus, you know. <laughs> so he, she's telling him exactly what he wants to hear. So obviously, it's his dad. I would say it's Anthony Cooper told her what to say. Yeah, I, I'd almost think. Don't you guys feel like that's the most devastating part when Locke learns that his mother was basically paid by his father to do all this stuff? Oh right. yeah. Oh my god, that's terrible. Well, that's why you can. I, I've yeah. always said for money. Had, she did it you for know, money. Exactly. Well, Locke had a chance, you know, a second chance on the island, but he still fell in the old same traps, mousetrap, yep. I guess you could say. He did. He, he just fell. And you, but you said, like, there's no character that you go, oh my God, I just feel so bad for this guy. Yeah. You did. That's so tragic. But then you have you have him him saying, we're, we're waiting for a sign. And he sees a plane, his mom, and Boone saying, Teresa falls up the stairs, Teresa falls down the stairs. And so that's as he sees the little plane flying in. And so it's a dream. It's a, but and Boone's like, I don't know. And but then he says, Who's Teresa? And Boone's like, Huh. Yeah. So was that who was who who uh how did Locke how did Locke see this vision? The island, man in black. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question about like yeah, how how did he? I mean, obviously, do you, is that what you're thinking? You think the the man in black is what's giving him these visions? I think it's something because you go back to Locke losing, you know, on this height when they're looking for the plane, he's losing his use of his legs. Okay, and right. that's the only reason he doesn't go up in the plane is because right. because he can't walk. So Boone has to go up. So when Bo- when Locke always says it's a sacrifice the island wanted, I think Locke is is pretty much right. He didn't. Man in Black, Man in Black, for win this end game at the end of the the whole thing, he needs Locke, mm-hmm. so yes. he can't have he can't have Locke die. Right. So the island's the sacrifice is is Boone. Boone, Boone has to die. Right. Yeah, I, I've I've I felt that way during the time, and I still feel that way. That for sure. That that's what that Boone had to be the sacrifice. You're right. He couldn't lose. Loss was too important of a of chess piece for him. Couldn't lose him, but. But we can definitely lose Boone. Yeah, but Boone interesting to note, though. Interesting to note, though, that you have a, a whole episode where his backstory is is he's being used by his dad, and in mm-hmm. some ways, Locke's using Boone. Yeah, he did. Like, True. I mean, he to, learned to, from his. He learned from the best, man. He learned from his father. <laughs> <laughs> he basically uses Boone the whole time on the island. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. And it was a very father son thing too between the two of them. I mean, That's Boone looked point. up to him. He did. So I never even thought of it that way, Matt. But you're right that that's very true. Wow. Every and now Boone, and then, and, and it, maybe Boone had to die because Boone was losing his faith in Locke. That's I mean, true. He, was, oh, he, he was, certainly he, was. I mean, mm-hmm. Boone was like, "Look, we can't get this thing open. Who cares? You know, right. I'm, I'm done. I don't care." And that's when I think Locke says, "The island will tell us what to do." And uh, but then the lock hires a PI going back to the flashback. He finds, finds out about his mom. And, he, and then the guy says, do you want to know about your dad? This usually ends bad. 
Mm-hmm. So he's telling him, you, know, you, you may not want to know. So then we find out Anthony Cooper is his dad. Yep. And it didn't go well. No. <laughs> you should have listened to that guy. I mean, you, 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 when you're watching it, you're like, going, I didn't seem like a bad guy. Oh, I didn't know. And, you know, like, oh, the whole thing. He's, he's telling Locke everything he wants to know. I mean, I, I obviously didn't see the twist at the end that was going to happen. No. I, 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 I know I didn't at the time. But, again, I wasn't, again, I wasn't an educated television viewer yet. You know, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, you know, loss changed that for me to make me be more educated, make me think more about what's going on. Uh, but at the time when I was watching, I was still that naive television watcher. I was just like, oh, home, on, home, home. You know, <laughs> now when you rewatch it, you think to yourself, how did I not see this coming? This is too obvious. <laughs> but it's only too obvious because now we're used to this. We're we're used to like paying more attention, looking for those little signs to go, hey, wait a minute, I think I know what's going to happen here. And so it should have been obvious to us, but it wasn't at the time. And it, that, which which made great television, of course. We oh yeah, we like, what? Oh my God, it's horrible. So and again, hats off to the people that figured out Anthony Cooper was the real uh, Sawyer. Oh yeah, yeah. No kidding. Um, I I was like, wow, where did this come from? And I go, well, mm-hmm. good job. Because that was, a lot of people had it early on. Yeah, That's those were the concept. smart ones. Those were the smart people. <laughs> yeah, kudos to them because I was like. Well, I never thought about that, but it, it made perfect sense after they started talking about it. But it's like, but yeah. then the writers, the writers stuck with it. They could have changed it up and made, you know, made some other guy do it. But it was, uh, I just thought it was great how they, people came up with that. Uh, you, you got Boone and Locke. They're looking for the plane. Boone's dragging Locke through the jungle. Um, I don't know. It just, it, and then they find, well, then they find the dead body. They find uh, the priest that, the Nigerian priest that has a uh, cash, a gun, and we don't know who he is at the time. Sure. We have no idea who he is at the time. Right. right. That's true. And then even Boone says, well, how can a, Niger- a plane from Nigeria make it to a, 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 a island in the tropics? Right. Which what made us all go, yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. It's another great example. I mean, it, it's throughout season one, especially. Lots of cool little things that we see, but none of it's revealed until, you know, many uh, episodes or seasons later. And that's what's all great about it. But yeah, at the time I remember watching it, you know, of course, yeah, your mind starts wondering what's going on with this. It's just, uh, it's funny to think about what we were going through at the time watching it. And of course, what we find out later on, it's great. And, great TV. I mean, and that's one of those things that I think with the, with the plane where the writers, you know, they came back to that and uh, to, pun intended, you know, they really stuck the landing. Uh, as far as, you know, coming back to this thing that, that, I mean, we, we can all, you know, be frustrated with, with some of the other, uh, things that they did. Maybe, um, I, I really didn't mind the Nikki and Paolo stuff. I just, I just hated the fact that they tried to make us feel like they were there the whole time. I think that was the thing that that didn't work. That That was the big mistake because this show was not, we've said a thousand times, it was on like other, any other show where you picked apart each scene. We knew they weren't there. Right. But, but for them to lay out, you know, like you said, like Anthony Cooper being Sawyer or, or this plane and, and us coming back to this plane, like in the in future episodes and, and really providing a very riveting story to go with it. Right. Like not just like, eh, it's just some plane, you know, it, it had meaning, it had purpose. So it had, um, it had purpose. And you know, what's funny is, is that if you think about it, they could have just made it you know, just some little mystery that we never really found out for sure. And it's just right. a plot, mm-hmm. plot device to have the ending uh, for the sacrifice with Boone. But no, they went back to it. And and there there is a lot of great things that throughout this show that they did that to that I felt like really does work well. And the, and the, sim, the symbology of the Virgin Mary with the heroine. Yeah. You know, like, and, and then how and that you plays have, in. You, with, have, you have an addict on the uh, heroin addict on the. Yeah. Island. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really great stuff there. So. Yeah, uh, really good. But uh, tragic and, end for Boone. Though. Well, I guess he's not. Dead. Spoiler alert! Sorry. Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think it's funny that it, it's it's yeah. it's Locke that knows about the heroin. He's the one that got Charlie off the heroin. Yeah. When when uh, when you guys first watching, I'm trying to re- remember, and I I'll be honest, I don't really recall for sure. But did you think that because we because we go into the next episode with the, unclear about what's going to happen with Boone? Mm-hmm. Were you rooting for him to die? <laughs> I shouldn't say rooting. Were you thinking he was going to die? Did you think he was going to make it? I mean, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I thought, 
Oh, he'll be okay. Jack will fix them. He'll be okay. I think that's what I was going into. That yeah, episode. I was thinking. I was. Did thought you have that same thing. thought? Yeah, because he's, he's oh, a main yeah, character. Definitely. He's a main character. They he's don't a main kill character, main character, right? You didn't think they were even remotely think about killing off someone that big yeah. just yet? Yeah, well, and, didn't do that back in the days. No, they did not. And right. they had that. They had the the Shannon Boone story already. Um, right? Mm-hmm. Did they already have that 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 story. Yes. And, they yeah. already, Yes, they had revealed all that. Yeah, yeah, and and I really liked that storyline. I liked how it connected those two characters in a very interesting way. And you talking um, about the Game of Thrones kind of thing? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the brother sister love, which well, we all love, brother sister love, right? <laughs> sure, right. But they're not biological, so you know we can kind of. You're right. Them. That's yeah. true. It's a little different than the uh, spoiler. Well, Game of Thrones. Very different. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. Should I should not be spoiling Game of Thrones on this po- on this video. No. You go ahead. Okay, <laughs> it's a lot of people know about that already, but uh, but yes, yeah, um, enough time's gone by now. <laughs> you haven't seen it by now. <laughs> but but uh, what is that that other movie? Oh, Clueless. I think Clueless is the first one to float that that kind of step step sibling kind of thing. But um, I'm really showing my age with that movie. Anyway, um, I did not think that that Boone was going to die, um, and uh, but still, it was it was pretty <laughs> horrific. Um, with with where they were taking Boone in that that moment, because yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I I probably was like, oh yeah, he'll be okay. Jack's there; he'll fix him up. Yeah. So yeah. the the island will make him better. Sure. Right. <laughs> well, they don't right. like Boone, so screw you, screw you, Boone. But I I like how when they're walking, Locke tells Boone that he was in the wheelchair before the crash. Locke never shared oh, that with anybody, yeah. but he shares it with Boone. He does, and that is. The first time he ever shares it with anyone on the island, right? right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And probably the last well, time, right? Well, actually, well, no. didn't didn't he oh, share well, that secret? With him? Well, he we we assume he he has a he tells Walt a secret. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. It was just assumed. But we don't okay. we don't know what it is. But he actually he tells Boone, yeah, I was in that wheelchair. Yeah. Hopefully so I won't die. Was- episodes to reveal my secret. <laughs> Did he feel this is going to sound morbid, but do you think did John share that with them knowing? Did John know <laughs> for sure that something was going to happen and Boone wasn't going to live? Do you think he knew what the island wanted? That he well, in his, in his image, him? in his, his, uh, the sign he got from the whatever he got, whoever he got it from, Boone, when he's saying Teresa falls up the stairs, Teresa falls down the stairs, yes, he's covered in blood, yes. Boone. Yeah. So, so maybe he John knew. Maybe he knew. That's I think he did too. Like you said, with having that vision, with the vision, and just the way John, his attitude leading up to everything and how it all went, and then the fact that once he gets gets them back to the caves to hand them over to to, to Jack, and then of course abandons them and immediately leaves because he can't be there out of guilt. Right. And I feel like he because he knew that he wasn't going to make it and he couldn't be there. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I felt. <coughs> you know, is is maybe what was going on there. And I mean, I could be wrong, but I just I felt like maybe what's going on with John. He just he he knew this was going to happen, and he didn't want to. As soon as he had the opportunity to get out of there, he just had to get out of there because it was just too much too much guilt there for him. Because, like you said earlier, Matt, I mean, he is still in the end a good person. He's not like he's this awful person. Well, he did that's lie. Too, he did lie too and say he fell off a cliff. That's true. And is he doing that just because? That's like an he's Obi-Wan. Still trying, he's still trying to hide the fact of the hatch, though, isn't he? Yeah. I, yeah. I think he was That's really it. afraid of everything he could say could have led them to find out that there's another secret he's keeping. Yeah. Which is really dumb of John because he he had to know if Boone comes out of this a little bit, there's a good chance Boone might mention, oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> me and John, we know we found this hatch. <laughs> we, we haven't been hunting boars for the last two because people, people know that they – Pretty much caught on that they haven't been hunting boars. Yeah, right. Because even yeah. Sawyer says, that, "Yeah, when was the last time they brought back any boar?" Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, that's been a, a big thing that's been mentioned many times leading up to this episode. Yeah, hey, Sawyer, where's all the boar? Yeah, Sawyer could have bagged a boar by now. So yeah, and he oh, chose not true. to. Yeah, that's true. Um, you have a uh, lot gives his dad his kidney. You know, it's hey dad, hey son, hey. You know, they're they're all. It, 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 it's what you're watching, thinking, "Oh, what a great moment!" You know. Mm-hmm. They got sure. together. He can give his dad his kidney, and 
I yeah. forgot about how like right going right, going into the surgery, I forgot that they were like holding hands. Like <laughs> yeah. in that moment, they're bonding together. Like this is great, Dad. I'm gonna help you out. It's just like oh, you're like going oh, this is so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wakes up out of the out of the hospital. He wakes up in the hospital room, and dad's gone. <laughs> oh man! Which I, I just I, I guess it was just part of the game that Anthony Cooper likes to play. You know, I just oh, I, yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't want this guy around me. Sure, he he wanted nothing to do with his son. He just wanted his kidney. Yeah, I, I, well, think, John, other- I think John would have given the kidney and, and not expected anything else. To be honest with you. Sure. But the other thing with Anthony Cooper, and I mean, this is just the dark side of, of how he cons is that I think he knows human emotion and he knows that he could punch John the hardest and he'd still come back. Yeah. Like he, clear, he clearly did his homework on his son. He knew exactly who he was and what it take. Remember he, he coached his mother into everything she should say and how she should do it. Everything mm-hmm. he knew what kind of person he was. You're right, Matt. He's a, a really good con man. He knew exactly what to do. Yeah. I mean, if special if, person right there. Yeah. I mean, if he, if he would have called up, John no and said, Hey, come back, blah, blah, blah. You know, like Locke would have just came back in and, oh, yeah. like, I love you, Dad. you know, yeah. Let's do a podcast about loss together. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was the long con between Jay and Jack, actually. It, it, of, it, it yeah. is. It is. It is. Yeah. We go back to the plane. Uh, <laughs> well, which one am I in that scenario? Am I? Am I? I, don't, Cooper I don't or know. Yeah, man. What are you trying to? What are you trying to say here? <laughs> Jeez, Matt. Can I at least be blocked? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was Jay and Jack. It wasn't. It wasn't Jack and Jay. So, right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll, I'll I'll be locked in that one. Uh, okay. We get to the plane. Boone climbs up the plane. He, he gets in there. A dead body falls on him. Um, he finds a bunch of stuff and he goes, finds the heroin. This is what's in your plane. This is what your vision was. It's heroin. Throws it down. Uh, the plane starts to move, but Locke is actually telling Boone to get out of the plane. That's true. He did. You know, he's, he's trying to he's, get him out. Got, hey, Boone, get out. Get out, Boone. Is, it, is there a radio? <laughs> yeah. But then he does find the radio. He does find the radio. And, you know, you it really can't. Works. Even though Boone is, let's face it, Boone's really not that bright overall, <laughs> in my opinion. But you can't help but think if you were in there. Now, personally, I don't know if I would have gotten in there, and I certainly would have stayed as long as he did. But, you know, you're stuck on this island, and you see a radio that potentially could radio for help. Don't you almost have to kind of maybe go for it? And obviously he did, and that was one minute too long to be staying in there, obviously. Right. Well, he, he talks to someone. And says, "Hey, we're the we're the survivors of Flight 815, and they say they're the survivors of Flight 8, in a different voice than Bernard's. Spoiler: It was Bernard, but yes. It, <laughs> it, so that I mean, I remember at that time was like, wait, what? Yeah, There's other, what, what's going on here? Was mm-hmm. it just something repeating? What was going on? Oh yeah, that was just to throw us fans off, uh, you know, while watching it, right? As far as right. like." The conversation on the radio was just a really mess with <laughs> mess with us. Well, a lot of things in Lost. That's what it was all about. Sure, keep us off the trail. But the plane falls off the cliff, booms, bang, bam, boom, and Locke runs in. And I brought this up in the last episode Matt did with me when Locke brought uh, um, Claire back. He yells, "Doctor, doctor, doctor!" Right? <laughs> oh, and, uh-huh. yeah. And this one, he yells, "Jack." Interesting. So just throwing it out there. Two different things. Just throwing it out there. But then as Jack's trying to figure out what's going on, like we said earlier, Locke takes off. Right. So mm-hmm. now is that just because then the next scene is, you know, uh, Cooper checks out early. Yeah. Anthony Cooper checks out early. Uh, Emily comes in and said, yeah, you know, I did it for the money. You know, your dad, he, you know, he's always been good about that. So Locke's been used twice in this this episode. And then he goes to check, and Eddie won't let. I can't let you in, John. Eddie feels like crap because you know he's just doing his job. Yeah. Locke is upset, and and then Locke, like you said, like you said earlier, he just is hitting his Volkswagen bug and crying. Yeah, and it, it was just it's just a hard scene to watch. I mean, it's so sad that uh, that there's human beings out there that would do that to another human being that uh, they 
help make, <laughs> you know, do you yeah. do that? Here? I mean, I understand obviously that, you know, that he obviously wasn't a real father to this guy anyway, but you would think that there'd be some kind of humanity there, but obviously this man has no soul or something. No, none no. whatsoever. Just yeah. doesn't care. I mean, he's just one of those people in life that just doesn't care. And then we have the famous scene where Locke goes to the hatch. He's like, I've done everything you've asked me to do. And what we see a light. Yeah. Yep. And like, oh my God, I got to watch the next episode to find out what this is. <laughs> yeah. Little did we know they were just making donuts down there. <laughs> but that's yes. how, that's how this, the, the episode ended. So overall thoughts on the episode. I absolutely loved it. It's, it's, I mean, yeah. uh, it's not, it's not, is it my favorite episode of season one? No, it's not my favorite episode of season one, but it is, is high up there. And a lot of it has to do with obviously my love for the character. Um, I think that definitely draws most of that passion for the episode, but it is certainly a, a, a top, uh, top tier yeah, episode. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. For sure. Pivotal episode. And then I know a lot of people will probably, when we get into it, to talk about what happens in the next episode, you know, losing someone as big as a big character. But this episode to me is the better of the two that we're going to talk about because I just, for me, I just, there was so much there and it was so much importance. And again, it probably just has to do with my interest it's, in Locke as a character. And, and also uh, sets up a lot of connections to other episodes in the future too. Yes. Uh, yeah. Not not just with Kimi and, and like uh, the plane, but also the other Losties. Um, sure. And Coop, Cooper's hatch. important to the story. Cooper, exactly. Um, and the hatch, exactly. Like there are multiple storylines that connect back to this. So very pivotal episode. And, and as Jeremiah pointed out, probably the better of the two uh, that we're, we're that we're talking about. Still, both really good because there's some powerful emotions in the next episode. But oh, absolutely. absolutely. One one last thing though, I, I just love that positioning of, of him losing all hope, you know, crying basically in his car, but then also crying, you know, over the hatch, losing all hope and just saying, Show me a right. sign. And and like a yo yo, you know, like I said, I mean, uh, John Locke is a person that like he needs that that support, that emotional like he he needs that. You know, he's he's just a man on a quest that has always yearned for something more. Right. And and if you give him an inch, like I said, if, if Anthony Cooper called him up or even just sent him a how you doing greeting card with the Hallmark <laughs> gold seal, he would have been like, hey, dad, let's go play, you know, shoot the let's bird. Have, let's have, again, a, let's have a catch. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's, yeah, let's have a catch. Um, so, yeah, when when that is positioned with the hatch. And here's a desperate man looking for a sign from the island, you know, whether it's man in black pulling at his, his, his uh, leg strings, so to speak, <laughs> or it's just fate, you know, that when that lights up, it, it is the exact thing that he needs at the exact moment. Yeah, it's, it's it was a perfect episode. Maybe, like you said, Jeremiah, not not my favorite, but very, very good. Excellent episode. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, one, one last thing. Just the imagery of the plane, too. Like, Lost is so good at bringing us this imagery. The frozen donkey wheel, a polar bear, like, you know, just all of this imagery. Like, you know, to see that plane up on top of a cliff. Like, what? Right. You know what I mean? Like, like I mean, we take some of this imagery for granted because we've, we've combed over it. Like, like, a, like a beach with a metal detector looking for all of this stuff. But just that imagery the first time seeing that plane up there and then and then it and then it falling, you know, it's uh, it's a total writer's room thing. You like you write a gun in a scene or, you know, it's a, it's a stage thing. But, you know, a gun enters a theater. It's going to fire like you. It's it's loaded. It's loaded with content. And when that that he climbs up into that plane, you know, it's going to crash. So great, so, great. Imagery. So Boone was destined to die in a plane. That was his death. <laughs> so one way or another. So yep. next we have do no harm. I can pronounce that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Do no harm. Thoughts on do no harm. I went first time. I'll let you go this time. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Uh, okay. So one thing that I, I always am like taken back when I watch uh, Jack episodes is how intense he is. Like, I mean, the dude runs at 99.9% .9 sometimes. And I'm like, just calm down, man. Let's just take a breather here. Go play some golf. 
<laughs> yeah, like relax. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, is that uh, his his wife is the the mom from Modern Family. I always forget <laughs> it until I see her, and I'm like, man, yeah, there's Claire. Claire. Yeah, Claire, which is his sister's name. Oh yeah. Nope. Is that yeah. a coincidence? I don't know. It's, I don't it's, know. It, it keep it in the ABC family, okay? Maybe we're going back to Game of Thrones. I don't know. <laughs> always, always be closing. Um, but uh, no, I liked I I liked this episode. It was a lot more intense and visceral than what I remember. Um, of the two, uh, as Jeremy, Very uh, I, I you know I definitely liked the 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 first one a little bit better, um, just because yeah the intensity of this one and and jack episodes i don't know like it's not that i don't like jack it's just that yeah he's always running it he's no mash doctor i'll just say that much <laughs> More he's no Burns. he needs a martini lighten, <laughs> lighten up yeah <laughs> lighten up francis yeah, Maya. Uh, <laughs> but is he the one to give a martini to? I feel like maybe that's not the... <laughs> True. Yeah, that's his dad. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> his dad um, already has a martini. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, feel like, uh, I feel like this episode was m more entertaining to watch that first time through because, as you said, this is an extremely intense episode because so much is going on. You've got Claire's, you know, about ready to deliver this baby. Jack's trying to save Boone's life. So much going on with with Jack on the island, let alone seeing what's going on in this flashback with him, which has so so much significance to his character that we you know some of it we already kind of knew, but then we're building more on it with uh, finding out about Sarah. But uh, yeah, there's just when that I remember for watching this because you're just so much like. Wow, is Boone gonna live? Is he gonna die? What's gonna happen here? You know, oh my God, they might have to take his leg off. I mean, there's just so much going. Oh, but Claire's having the baby. I mean, and, and now Kate's gonna have to deliver. It's just there was so much going on at the time. I was just swept up in it, you know, from what I recall. But you know, you're now the rewatch. You're just going, yeah, Boone's gonna die. Claire's having the baby. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack, yeah, Jack's Jack. Jack's being Jack. You know, he. He's marrying the person for the wrong reasons. We got it. Okay, let's move on. You know, I know it sounds terrible, but I feel like on a rewatch, it's one of these episodes you put on, maybe you're not paying quite close attention anymore because you know what, what the outcome is, and you feel like, I don't know if it's is is intriguing enough for me on a rewatch um, as it as it was that first time out. That's kind of the, the takeaway I had from the episode overall. And it, and that's probably just me. Maybe, maybe for other people, especially anyone who loves... I think that's fair. Anybody who loves Jack's going to love this for sure. Uh, because it's a very um, humbling episode for Jack, a lot of it, in a ways too. You know, he realizes that, you know, obviously he, he can't fix everything. And sometimes that's okay. Spent the beat. Well, at, at some point, maybe he should just comfort Boone instead of trying to save him. I was yeah. I, I was surprised by some of the things that I had forgotten that he does in this effort to save Boone. That was the yeah. thing that kind of surprised me. I mean, put, put his own life in danger too with the yeah. Blood. Like on the rewatch, those were the things that surprised me. Like you're right, Jeremiah. Like like we already knew some of those outcomes. Like Claire's delivering the baby. You know, um, Saeed's trying to make it with Shannon. You know, <laughs> and that is important. <laughs> that is important. But uh, well, Boone's out of the way now, so yeah. <laughs> Not right um, but but I guess the level and the extremes that Jack goes to to save Boone, those were the things that I kind of forgot, you know, because I I just was. Well, also, you you had you had Son going, you know, she's not a doctor or nurse, but she she realizes he can't be saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she realizes, but but she's you know, but but you know, Jack, he has to because that's the whole point of this flashback is he. He said he was able to save his wife. She wasn't supposed to walk again. She wasn't supposed to, you know, all the other stuff that happened. But, you know, you have Kate. I, she runs to the beach, finally runs. To Kate, uh, he should have said, damn it, Kate, run. <laughs> She's still hanging around. But she goes to she goes to tell uh, Sawyer and Sawyer just gives her no haggling at all. Just gave her the alcohol, gave everything he had. That was that just more of a sign that. um that their relationship, you know, Kate and Sawyer's has really come to a new level. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
For sure. You're right. Leading up to, you know, all this Sawyer, there's no way Sawyer's just handing over anything to anyone. No. But now he's, he's in, willingly he's, just like, yeah, Kate, you need it. Here it is. Yeah. He just said, oh, Boone's in trouble. Here you go. Yeah. But, but oh, be careful. It's made out of glass and not plastic as it is. You know. <laughs> and it's going to, it's going to break. Don't like, fall. Whatever I, you do, don't fall. I think that was the surprise for me. I was like, don't, don't they make these out of plastic? But okay. <laughs> Like I mean, two thousand, you know, uh, what was it, two thousand two, right? Two thousand four. Two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. So. I always think it's a, out a couple of years before. I think it, but yeah, two thousand four. They're they're not made with plastic at that point, but it make it's more dramatic than it was made with glass. Not on so. Oceanic Airlines. I don't know if you heard, but they uh, they had a thing against plastic, and that the airline was trying to show you know that uh, you know plastic's just not good for the environment. Yeah, you couldn't. Hey. Get couldn't get a straw on Oceanic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so we just, uh, go, but when we go back to flashback, Jack's getting married. Now, at first, I remember watching this. I didn't. I thought the guy who was getting the bow tie for. Oh, yeah. I thought he was getting married. Oh, total misdirection there. Yeah. yeah that was, yeah. Yep, that was a total misdirect. Um, and a, a great job. And they, they, I think, probably fooled everyone. I know they fooled me. I mean, I, you're immediately thinking, oh, who's this guy that, you know, is getting married? Okay. Someone Jack knows. And then you're like, oh, wait, nope, it's not. It's Jack getting married. Okay. Wow. So that was great storytelling. And his future bride is the the woman he fixed. Yep. And which and comes that, later, which comes later on, later on. That's a, that's a continuous, a story that continues later on. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you probably sh probably knew it <clears throat> as the episode progressed. I mean, you certainly had to think, well, that we're going to see more of this uh, down the road. But, you know, just like every ep every centric episode about Jack, it's just more and more of showing us uh, who this character, who he is as a person. And um, it should not surprise anyone that Jack's basically marrying someone for the wrong <laughs> wrong reasons more right. than it, uh, than he should have. But uh, that's Jack. Who he yeah. is? Well, it's, it's almost comes back to where the island where I said earlier maybe Bo uh, Jack should have been more about giving Boone more quality of life towards the end. Maybe you know giving him more alcohol. I don't know because then he sets his leg and the, and and Boone just screams out in pain. Did he? Did he deserve? I mean, I know Jack is a doctor trying to do his best he can to save him, but at this point, can Boone be saved? And is Jack doing the wrong thing by putting Boone through this incredible pain? True. Now, Jack makes a big point that he would have treated him differently if he would have known that he was crushed from this plane. Right. Um, I, I guess that's true. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I'm assuming that that, you know, that maybe there was something different that, you know, he could have done if he would have known exactly how he hurt. I mean, I understand Locke kind of fibbed and said he fell off a cliff in a way he sort of fell off a cliff right i mean right. in a way I'm telling you, this is obi-wan kenobi uh you know rules from a certain point of view you know sure he fell but, off does, a but but like your, your point jeremiah if if he'd known if he because he didn't know a plane maybe he takes the leg off first maybe okay. he takes the leg first knowing that he was crushed and that's why all the blood is going to the to the leg mm. yeah you know but john in fairness to john though he he pulls him out of there pretty quickly i don't know if it feels like to me when you watched it even as on the second you know when you're watching it as a rewatch i don't feel like he's really paying attention too much i feel like i know does he free him maybe does he know he was crushed by stuff i don't recall because he's you know he whips him out of that plane as quickly yeah. as possible gets him on his shoulder and he, you know carries him to the caves I, yeah, I don't know. he can walk again yeah 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 it's the significance that the fact that his legs you know that you know, he was definitely going to at least lose lose the leg i guess there is some significance to that part of the story that, with john but yeah i don't know i i i'm not making excuses here for john i'm not saying that maybe if john would have stuck around gave him the full story and just came clean hey here's what happened and you know what's funny is he really he didn't have to tell him about the hatch he could have just said we were out hunting we came upon this plane Right. Of course, we had to investigate it. My, I was feeling, or you know, tell him whatever about why he couldn't make it up there. Boone volunteered. He went up there. The plane fell fell down. I, you know, John could have if he wanted to. He could have given him at least enough to help Jack. 
but he didn't. And could Jack have saved him anyway, considering all the damage that was done to Boone? I mean, I don't think he could have. <clears throat> I'm not a doctor, but it certainly I wouldn't think he could have. Uh, and that, uh, well, and then, of course, we have what we know as an audience is that I don't know if the island wanted him to survive anyway. Like we said earlier, I think he was supposed to be a sacrifice anyway. Yeah, he almost drowned. He almost, a lot of things almost happened to him, right? So Sure. Boone That's was true. supposed to die. All right. Yeah. A, uh, Locke wanted to keep all the heroin for himself. <laughs> uh, me. <laughs> uh, Jack was just upset that he wasted all that alcohol. He heard about the I Never game, and he wanted to play it with uh, Kate. <laughs> Kate. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Good theory. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, but the alcohol's gone, too. Yeah, exactly. Come on, my man. He's wasted it, man. <laughs> I know, guys, as, a, as a, uh, a potential alcoholic, I was just devastated watching the reaction of this episode, seeing the alcohol get dumped out like that. That was just hard for me to watch. <laughs> they they would not have wasted it like that on uh, BSG. So, yeah. No, they wouldn't have. No. They were like, sorry, you're dead. You as my shirt it. says, I drink and I know things. If I don't have drinks, I can't know things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of gin, uh, we have gin here's uh, Kate's call for help. He has gin, is, 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 gin a work, is gin a workaholic? Absolutely. He stop working. He he is certainly a workaholic. For I sure. can't think he was going to hear the whispers. Like I mean, there's certain things yeah. that I forget on rewatches, and, yeah. and you know, at one point I was like, oh, he's going to hear the whispers because when he's looking around. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally. Because he stops for that second. Obviously, it looks like he's just trying to get his direction on where the voices, are, where the, the the help call was coming from. But mm -hmm. you're right. At that second, you were like, "Oh, is he gonna hear voices?" And yeah. Was, you know, no, it's just just Kate going, help. "Help, help me, help me." And then we have sight because everyone's looking for Shannon too. They're looking for a negative blood, and Jack's freaking out, yelling at a uh, at because I don't know. I, I'll be honest, with you, I don't know what my blood type is. I'm so glad you guys asked that because I watched this episode uh, on the rewatch. And I think I had the same thought when I watched it the first time around is, oh, no, you know what? I have no idea what my blood type is. Right. Do you, like, right. No one knows. Yeah. And the, and the, the sad thing is, is that um, as far as just like a case of survival, I feel like I should know my blood type more yeah. than I, more than I know my social security number. We should. Yeah. I know my we social should. security by heart. You know? Yeah. It gets you Good anything. Point. But uh, but no, blood and, and blood type should be that easy because it's it's just like either a positive, a negative, you know, or, or whatever it is. But there's it a be hard to remember. And I, I I've I've been told before. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I just don't remember. All, Last time I was in the, a couple years ago, I was in the when I was in the hospital, wherever it was, I was told, and I, I, if I had to, if someone said a million dollars, I go, I don't know. But see, yeah, you're here's right. the thing: you, either you're in the hospital when you find out, or just donated blood. So you're like, "Whoa, yeah. I don't know what I am." Yeah, um, oh, okay, great. I'm, you know, I'm orange juice. That's I'm orange I'm juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm orange juice and cookie blood type. Well, they so they're freaking. Jack's freaking out. I think because Jack knows at this point he can't save Boone. Yeah, I think I think he knows he yeah. can't save him. But it, it, then we're looking. Well, where's Shannon? I don't know where Shannon is. Well, she's off on a picnic with Saeed. So there's that. You're in the love shack. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then I remember when I watched this episode during this part, I thought I, that's exactly what his mind going is. Oh, my God. Boone is going to potentially die here. And his sister, who he's in love with, by the way, is somewhere else. It was just like, oh my God, she's gonna flip out when she finds out what the hell's going on. And of yeah. course she does. Yeah. She does. The guilt. I mean, and we go back, Sarah's coming. I think Sarah wants is really wants to marry Jack. You know, the girls are checking him out on the piano and stuff like that. And Jack's like, oh yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> Jack is looking for his dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he really wants his dad to show up and you're like going because everything we know about his dad, his dad's a, his dad's a jerk. He's not he's not Anthony Cooper bad, right? He's not a great dad either. No, no, definitely not, for sure. And then uh, Jen, Kate tells Jenny has to go get Jack because Kate's in labor. I mean, Claire's in, Claire's in labor. They're going back and forth. Now, shouldn't Jack a bit? Jack knows he can't save Boone, right? We, we, pretty much, mm -hmm. Jack have gone and and because potentially any time. A baby's and you know, there's 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 things that can happen when you're pregnant you know a labor shouldn't jack have been there but okay at this point though he's already given his blood 
So he is not, he's not in the right frame of mind to go traipsing through the jungle at night, like basically a pint shy. Of being, but, you know, but, should he, but should he give him his blood? Well, I think he was too too far in. I, I mean, there's no way. I mean, I think after he gives his blood, I think he probably realizes. But I don't know. That's my. I mean, uh, he should have came to the conclusion earlier. You're right, but he should have also came to that same conclusion when his fiance Sarah was giving that toast, and I was just like, "Really? These are the reasons why you're getting married? Okay, this doesn't sound like it's gonna last. It's not gonna make it. She's gonna cheat on you with your dad." Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <Yeah. laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's okay, but I mean, there's a little bit of idol worship there when she's just like, to my hero, Jack. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, he saved you, but it's almost like you're indebted to him now. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I understand that the whole nurse, uh, what do they call it? The nurse. Nurse patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascination. Yeah. But, uh, doesn't doesn't seem like it's 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 built for this modern day society that we live in. But then we finally have Boone tells Jack they found a plane and a hatch. Yeah. So finally it comes out. It finally comes out and it's now it's got it's obviously got Jack's wheel spinning like what what's going on? Mm -hmm. Right. So, now is this the point now you think that Jack starts thinking because obviously we find out at the end episode, spoiler alert, that he thinks that this maybe was that he murdered him, you know, that, right. you know, he purposely tried to, to kill him. Uh, is that the point you think that Jack starts thinking that, or is it just as time goes on, but you think maybe at least the wheels got to get it spinning at that point, that maybe something else was going on in his mind. I think so. I don't think Jack trusts a lot of people. No, that's true. No, I, that's ironically, true. He, he trusts the convict Kate. But he yeah. doesn't trust a lot of other people. <laughs> so. Well, he did, so, have, he did have some issues with Kate early on. Sure. He did. He was the reserved with thing. her. The whole little toy plane thing. Yeah, I think because Jack bought into this this theory like a lot of them did, and you know John as well, is that you know, he felt like, hey, the island kind of gives us all a chance to restart our lives. So he tried to right. ignore the fact that, you know, obviously Kate had been involved in some, some pretty bad stuff or something. He didn't know for sure what she was involved, but knew, you know, enough to where she was being arrested. So um, I guess he's willing to forgive. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Jack definitely always has had some trust he, issues. He likes her. And he definitely likes her. Yeah. She, so, she is easy on the eyes. So definitely uh, easy on the eyes. How many people would, did you kill? Oh, it would have been three. I would have said no. <laughs> I'm okay oh, was you. I when this came out? <laughs> I looked it up because it was 15 years ago, so I would have been 29 when this episode aired. Still wet behind the ears, huh? I was like, I was 40 something, 42. I, I was old. I was dry okay. behind the ears. Just yeah. Jack, Jack told me there was no math involved on this, so I'm not even gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, too. No math in the then, podcast. Then you go back to Shannon and Saeed, and she's like, oh, Boone's kind of in love with me. You know, we're, <laughs> we're brother and sister, but it's a little different. We're, you know, you know, we had different uh, different uh, moms, right? <laughs> right. And yes. Right. And, and, and they're, he, they're he's just doing the details about And I kind of gave it a ride to give it a try. It didn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't for me. <laughs> You're my guy now, but, uh, but Iraqi, but Iraqi, Iraqi uh, soldiers. I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch the news much. What's going on with your country right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sun pulled out. Jack still got the tube with blood coming out, and, and Sun goes, "Enough! You've given enough blood. You've given enough." Yeah. So Sun, sun is the one that is the level-headed one here. She yeah. is the level. -headed. If you think about it, who knows what would have happened if she wasn't around? Yeah, he might have gone too far, and like Matt had mentioned earlier, might have might have killed himself doing this. You know, yeah. put himself in really bad health. He's the only doctor, as we've mentioned many times on the episodes. He's the only doctor on the island that they know of. So <laughs> it's not a, you know he's the guy yeah, you don't want to have hurt. But is he doing it because we? He just has to try. And, you know, the whole Jack needs to fix everybody and fix everything. Right. And he just doesn't want to give up. He doesn't want to say, no, I can't. He doesn't want to say, I can't do this. Is it because his dad was always so hard on him? Or is it just I think that's, personality? 
what all the writers always was trying to make us know the, to tell us was is that it all stems down to how he feels about way his dad felt about him and it, it that that's what was going on here i mean everybody on this show of course has daddy issues including jack and um that i feel like you're right that's that's what's going on there but i don't know you think it's more than that no i think it comes down to his dad i think it's just is how his, he was brought up yeah that's 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 what i always felt like too and then you know dad you know, dad jack was waiting for his you know his dad to show up and all they had to do was have some drink have a bottle of alcohol by the pool because yeah. that fixes drunk. everything it's all it took. <laughs> hey kiddo sit down how's the water oh you got alcohol i'll be <laughs> your friend i'll be your friend today but he actually gives jack some good advice he actually he does i thought yeah there, there's not a lot of that goes on there but i feel like this is definitely one of those moments definitely the first time that we ever really have i feel like a positive scene between the two of them right right so definitely more positive than the terrible you know i this kid died on my table. I'm watching Carol Burnett and having a drink. Yeah. See you right. Um, yeah, I just, it, it, but at this point, I think Jack just doesn't, I don't think he cares. I mean, you can only get so yeah. much bad advice before it, you, your dad finally gives you good advice. Are you going to listen? Right. Probably not, which he didn't do. Then Jack says he's got to take his, go get Michael. I got to take, I got to amputate his leg. I got to take yeah. his leg up. It sounds like, what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> Yep. But uh because at this point I wrote down son knows Jack can't save him. He can't save him. Yeah. Why why yeah. put Boom through even more pain? Can you imagine the pain that would have Oh my gosh. I mean it was it, it was just, painful just watching him trying to set the Yeah. Deck. I mean that was I mean we even see Hurley like you know, like in that yeah. scene too. So we well, even tells Hurley, Don't you pass out on me. I won't. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> That's one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> you could see Hurley was getting really woozy there, and he's like, yeah. "Don't you do it! Don't you well, do it!" Well, I don't blame him on that one. You, you know, Boone's a friend. Right? I mean, he's a friend, and you got all. He's oh my god, it was just. Uh, Listen, not everyone's cut out to see that kind of stuff. You know, no. I mean, it's, yeah, it's perfectly understandable. Uh, well, I guess he was going to bring the door down on his leg. Yeah, but how many times would it have it taken it? I, I can't imagine. Good, one time working there's, there's a really good point i mean again there's a lot of physics physics involved here but there's a very good chance that the first time out it's not going to do it right <laughs> boone's like look i've seen the trebuchet it's not gonna work <laughs> no, it didn't that's work right. it's work. Right. Uh, right jack gets married to sarah i thought it was a good ceremony and then jack gives it he goes no you saved me you oh saved yeah me. yeah that so uh, I, he, I saved there jack mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about that line? Did is that really true? Sarah didn't save Jack, right? No. He's nobody, the same nobody, saved, nobody saved Jack. Yeah. Well, do you feel like maybe the island the end saved him? I feel like I Jack think, is a different I, I, person. I, I, I think he died a peaceful person. I think he yes. died a peaceful guy. Technically, right. Jack saved the island. Uh yeah. I mean, well, at least he saved the ones he cared about, you know. I mean, he was he was there to make sure that they the ones they were able to make it right so yeah i i think um i think the island did a lot more for him than anything else mm -hmm. if you had to pick something that really defined jack in the end i think being on the island just just like most of these characters so was right. imp significant then you have boone tells jack there's no chance let me go i thought it was a great scene yeah, that's a great scene. Yeah. It, was, it was it was kind of good because we just came off the last episode which was kind of a tearjerker and this one's like a no, they're really going to kill off Boone. They're really yeah. going to kill off Boone. I mean, yeah. I've been watching for the first time. Like, no, I like as crazy as as much as Boone. You know, does makes a lot of mistakes, uh -huh. but he's at least he's helpful. And he was a he was a character. I liked his character. Yeah, and I get, can't believe they're killing him off. And he's they're killing him off without him saying goodbye to his sister, which is another thing that Lost did. That other show, there's no way another show would have done that. Yeah, there's got to be one more final goodbye. There's right, one, you know that. You know, well, I definitely I was like you guys. I remember at the time I was shocked. I couldn't believe that was happening. And um, but I, I don't. I was a little different than you though, because I don't remember really loving him, mm -hmm. and I certainly don't like Boone now. I watched the show and I was like, eh, Boone, whatever. <laughs> I don't make a terrible person. I never was a big Boone fan, but I, but I was, I was blown away that he that they were killing him off. I was like what 
Well, the way they did it too, because you have you have Boone dying, yeah. and you have Aaron being born. So it's like the circle of life. You know, you have the the whole thing. Uh, Boone tells uh, Boone tells Jack to tell uh, Shannon, I. In yeah, the right. So what? What do you think he was really trying to say when he said "I"? I love you. I was at a hatch. I wasn't hunting boar. I, I, I don't know. I, I think it was I love you. It's got to be it, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was a, a, just a great scene because you have life and death. I mean, it just it was just yeah. a perfect um, thing. Yeah. And you have, you have Claire comes and shows the next day is showing everybody the baby, and you know they got the music playing, and everyone's you know they, they have the log carrying people in the background going, "Oh my God, this is great." I, I like that because I mean it is like a darkest night kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. like a, it's like a dark night of the soul kind of moment here where Jack's, as Jeremiah's pointed out, he almost gives his whole life to save Boone, right? Right. And and yeah, the the circle of life. You have life being born. It's a new day. It's a brand yeah. new day at dawn, and they're on the beach. And yeah, you get to see Aaron, um, you know, as a baby. And it's just, uh, I like that moment. And as bittersweet as it is, when when you do see Shannon, it's like, oh, watch me go like break this couple's heart. Like just like, just just like coming out like. Oh, yeah, we just had sex and like we're all. Happy. <laughs> well, I thought it was because it, it wasn't, it was visual, not audio. Yes. It, yeah. And, and you have the music playing and you see Hurley go, sees, I think Hurley's the first one to see Shannon and Saeed come, you know, on, mm -hmm. towards the beach and his face is like, and then Kate and then Jack turned around and sees it and goes, Jack goes, okay, I have to go tell Shannon. And it, it's not done verbally, verbally, it's done, you know. And he's a doctor. This is what he does. Right. You the know. scene works really well because we don't get the dialogue because you yeah. know what, what's said. Although I do like to visualize, like Matt was saying, as he walk going, so how was a date? Oh, by the way, while you were gone. <laughs> yeah, we tried, to, we tried to find you. Your brother <laughs> may have died. <laughs> but we did try very hard to save him, just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't believe me, Stay tuned gave, next week when I go I, off on lock. I, I gave my blood. But then the final scene is that Jack talking to Kate says, Boone uh, didn't die. He was murdered. Yeah. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh, um, snap. So that was the episode. I I, um, I, I, I I liked it. I thought I liked it. Obviously not as good as the first one. But I thought it was an excellent episode. Absolutely. And it's it, a critical episode. Um, obviously, you know, losing your first major character, that's makes it memorable right there uh we do learn of course more about jack and um it, it's definitely going to be one that even though like i said for me it didn't work as well with, on a rewatch just because i feel like i kind of this would be an episode for me to yada yada a little bit through but um i think it's still very obviously significant to to the episode and it's it's a big moment it's a big moment so much going on so much action like you guys had said good grief the back and forth and boone trying to be saved and claire having the baby that's just that's a that's a lot more drama you get on most shows so well no <laughs> that it, 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 did sh it did show that nobody is safe on this show nobody's safe I mean, on the no, show boone, yeah boone wasn't a background character he was in he was in mo he was in he was a uh, yeah. character i would say yeah, and like I said at the at the top of the discussion, also too is as for Jack, um, it was a very humbling episode because he realized I cannot save everyone, right? And that's important to it for, very, uh, very for important. us, the audience, and for him as a character development. And maybe an important, maybe an important move, uh, uh, like an important, I don't know, moment for him going yeah. forward. You know, as we see what he does face and, and the conclusions that he does come to, even with the whole, the whole group, the whole live together, die alone kind of aspect, you know, right. it's like, here's, here's Boone and Locke going out into the woods, you know, dying, dying alone, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, we live together. Um, one, one last point about that, that closing sequence when Jack walks up to Shannon, it's a, it's a really great moment because yeah, the, there is no words uttered, but you see Shannon, like as Jack's coming forward, she looks to Saeed like, well, what's he going to say to Saeed? Oh no. Right. Yeah, like it's me. it's me. Like Saeed has no one else close to lose. I do. And I just love that. Yeah. So, um, 
anyway, I just wanted to to kind of point that little little moment out because I I just love that little nugget of you know. So. Great point, Matt. It is a great point, and um, you guys don't have to answer this. You want to? I'll be the one to throw this out there. But we I had mentioned earlier that I felt like Locke to me, in my opinion, John Locke is one of the most tragic, if not the tragic, most tragic character on Lost. For me, guys, I feel like Jack is the least tragic. I look at this guy's backstory, okay? I get it. He's got daddy issues, right? Okay, dad dad was an asshole. He was a jerk. He was not a great guy. But is he really worse? I mean, he's his dad's a successful surgeon. He probably grew up pretty well off, right? I, mean, don't, yeah. I feel like Jack was not growing up in poverty. Look at you that know, way. He had a decent life. He had two parents. So, you know, great. Like I said earlier, they're not the best parents in the world. But I just feel like I don't I don't cry for it. I just feel like the writers tried so hard to make us feel bad for Jack, and I never felt bad for Jack. I never did that feel that bad for him compared to everybody else. You know what I mean? Like I, you think about some of these other stories, and they're so terrible. I mean, even Kate is more tra- – I mean, but I look at Jack and I go, eh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I, didn't feel, I didn't feel bad for Jack, but I did root for him. I did – I did I, for- I, 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 I did have an understanding for him because I thought he he was right a lot of the times. I thought, you know, it's like I – always, I always bring this up that, you know, Locke said you have to be the leader, and Locke did everything he could to undermine him as the leader. Jack – Jack, even though I don't ever never felt sorry for him, but Jack is an extreme, obviously the one of the most cru- crucial elements of this story. I mean, it's clearly this story was centered around this this character. It starts with Jack, it ends with Jack. I mean, mm-hmm. it, he is the he is the one we're basing everything really kind of off of. I'm just saying, for me, looking at this now down the road, because at the time Jack was my hero. Like he's the one I'm rooting for when I'm watching this show. And I still root for the guy. I'm, I love him. Don't get me wrong. I'm just looking at his back. If I, if I had to take the place of one of these people, <laughs> I, you know, his, his backstory, hey, he's a surgeon. He's got money. I feel like he's doing okay. You know, I feel like, you know, I don't know why I'm whining over his story too much. I mean, I'll take money, money can't right. buy you love. Hey, his, huh? his dad's a lot better than uh, that Bradley Cooper right here. So, Thank I you. mean, would you rather have Christian Shepard or Bradley Cooper as a dad? That's Bradley all Cooper. I'm trying to say, Matt. Which one would you want? You <laughs> certainly aren't taking John's life. If you could jump into any of these people's lives, right? You're not taking John's. You're not taking a lot of these people's lives. I'm not taking. I'm not taking Sawyer. Sawyer's childhood is nightmarish. Thank you. You could write well, a horror well, story. Boone had, Boone had a pretty good childhood, right? For the most part. Who? Boone. But he doesn't make it to the okay. end. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Okay. But, I think he had more money than Jack. No, you're right. Okay. So you're absolutely right. I'm not saying Jack's number one. Now that you mentioned that, no, Boone would be number one because he's young, he's good looking, he's got money. You know, he could have technically sleep with whoever he wanted to, but yet he wanted to sleep with his stepsister, which is really dis- disturbing. Granted, Shannon is is very easy on the eyes, and I certainly want to sleep with her too. But come on, Boone, you you know. You can have women just as good looking as Shannon if you wanted to. I'm just saying. But you're right. I yeah, the Boone's not a bad person to jump into. That's what you should do sometime. Let's do let's do power rankings. Who would you rather jump into? Who would you rather be? Would you rather be? <laughs> mm. yeah. I, I feel like Jack's high up there on your list as potential people you would be like, yeah, I could be Jack. Definitely Locke. I, I, he's number one. You're there's no argument there. Anyone who says there's no way I'd want to be John Locke. No, there's just, there's just no, no way. Unless you just really like having a terrible life. <laughs> yeah, there's just because, but Sawyer's a close second, I think. Yes, absolutely. When you finally get the full backstory in Sawyer, you're like, oh my goodness, this, that yeah. is, like you said, Matt, it's horrifying. Yeah, it is totally horrifying. Yeah, that was, that was the other episode that, that I mean, how do, how do you recover from something like that? You don't. Yeah. That, I mean, just, you get Sawyer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get this angry guy. Yeah, you, you get a letter in your pocket and a, and a death wish. So, yeah. but uh, no, uh, it was it was really good, you know, uh, to review these episodes. I I liked. I, I've enjoyed going back and watching Lost. So, and uh, me too. This was so, a great. This is a great conversation. It flowed perfect. Great. Well, I, I was. It's been an honor. I really and uh, really glad you invited me on because um, it's forced me to get back into loss again, and I'm glad because 
Um, I knew you were doing it. Uh, my my buddies uh, Josh Wiggler and and Mike Bloom were doing it, and I'm thinking I need to do it. I need to do it. And then when you reached out to me and said, "Hey, you want to come on and do it?" I'm like, "Okay, great." So then I started getting into it, and I am just so glad you did because now I'm enthralled. I can't. I, I've been going through. I'm almost done with season one, and I'm can't wait to move move into the yeah, other. I'm, I'm actually glad I'm doing it too because, like I said, I haven't really talked about it's long. How much you forget? Yeah. yeah. Is that because I'm getting old? <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, real life stuff well, I'm already I'm already am old, so yeah, that could be it. <laughs> it could have a lot to do with it. But no, it's it's been fun and this was a great I enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks. Really. Thanks for having me. So, Anything else we want to talk about? Whose life we know. maybe that'll be the next one we do. Whose life I, I maybe when we're all done. We'll yeah. do, uh, whose life do we want to jump into? We'll come back and do that one. That, that's that would definitely be a good uh, after the rewatch <laughs> uh, podcast that did for sure. All right. We'll do it. <laughs> That's like fun. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. All right, it. you guys. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.